Hello, and welcome to KDAV News, the monthly update for professionals working with Qt, C++, and 3D technologies. I'm Rob Brock, and in this edition we have Qt 6 released, new versions of Qt Creator and Qt Design Studio, look out to 2021 interview with Kala Dalheimer, Library of the Month, and some announcements. As already announced in previous editions, Qt 6 was finally released earlier this month, which brings you to the question, should I stay or should I go now to Qt 6? That probably depends on your requirements regarding features and licensing. You'd want to make sure first that those meet your specific needs, both in the long and short terms. The first version of Qt 6 deliberately is still missing many modules that are included in Qt 5.15. So, before updating to Qt 6, you can check the blog posted below listing modules that are supported in Qt 6 already and that are going to come in 6.1 and 6.2. 6.2, which is announced to be released in September 2021, will also be the first Qt 6 version with long time support. And, by the way, there are new versions of Qt Creator and Qt Design Studio coming out in December, after recording this edition. We'll post the link below when it happens. I'll keep you informed about Qt 6 in the coming editions. At the end of this still very demanding year, I talked to KDAB's president and CEO, Khaled Dalheimer, to give us his outlook to the software industry in 2021 and beyond. Hello, Kala. Hi, Robert. So I guess I can speak for just about anybody on this planet that this hasn't been a terribly great year. Um, over here at KDAP, we are still doing reasonably well. Business is okay. Um, most of us are in uh, good health and we, we have so far survived uh, the storm that has come over all of us. We've uh, been able to maintain uh, a revenue stream that is uh, certainly good enough to keep us afloat. So that's great. And that's certainly not something that all businesses around the world can say these days. So from that point of view, um, we, 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 are, we are quite happy that this has worked out for us so far. If we look at more general industry trends that we find interesting, for example, there seems to be an increasing amount of security consciousness. This has been uh, triggered by more reports in popular media about, let's say, smart home devices or your smart TV being used for distributed denial of service attacks. Um, the general problem of people getting ship routers with uh, predictable passwords like admin, admin, uh, and then Often it's not even possible to change the password. Um, and the number of devices in our homes and obviously also in, uh, in our industries uh, is ever increasing. We're adding smart light bulbs. We're adding uh, smart refrigerators. And it's, it's questionable how secure these are against being part of a botnet. And, uh, uh, but it's at least good that there is an increasing consciousness. So. Hopefully, uh, this is going in the right direction. And I would expect that in a couple of years from now, there would be sort of like we have the CE uh, marking in Europe, which currently applies to electrical safety, and but that, that would in the future also apply to IT safety. Another consciousness that I think is increasing is the consciousness of power consumption. They, Several operating systems have added uh, reports about digital well-being, which mostly means that your phone tells you on Sunday night how much time you how much time of your life you've wasted playing uh, mobile games. If you click on that, you can actually get more information, not just how much time you've spent, but also how much power was consumed. Um, our Mobile phone screens are getting bigger and bigger, so the, the phones are getting more and more power hungry, and the batteries aren't always growing with that. 
But as there are tools now, we can actually look, why is my phone almost empty again? Uh, which app was it that was consuming so much energy? Oh, it was this app. Yeah, I don't really need that, so I'll uninstall it. Apps just idling and, and, and consuming CPU power and thus battery, uh, will, they'll probably never go away entirely, but they'll be replaced by better ones, at least gradually. So in summary, energy consumption is going to be just another target vector in software development, just like features, bugs, uh, cost, time to market are, uh, energy consumption is going to be another metric that software development can and will be optimized for, obviously, in competition with the aforementioned ones. We have seen for a couple of years uh, that there are the number of devices that are deployed anywhere in industries, in households, in the, pub, in the public space. It's the, the number of devices is growing exponentially. And that means that the demand for developers also continue, continues to rise, in particular for good software developers. Uh, we see this in the demand for our services over a longer, if we look at the longer term trends, uh, we see this also in um, recruiting that uh, uh, the competition for uh, the best developers is getting ever more fierce. This not only means that more and more uh, good software developers are needed, but there are also other professions uh, manifested in job titles around the software developers that have adjacent roles that require different skills, different educations, for example, industrial designers. Uh, we have uh, the more UI there is, the more UI there needs to be designed. This is both from, from a more art point of view, um, and then there's also the big field of DevOps, develop operations, uh, continuous integration to young people with an interest in computers. Uh, I can only say, this is an industry where there are more than enough jobs and where there will be more than enough jobs for many years to come. So if, if you're willing to work hard and acquire, uh, acquire very good skills, then you will not have any problems finding a job in IT. And finally, my last observation is one that is more specific to what we do over here at KDAP, which is... Uh, uh, of course, a lot user interfaces in cross-platform environments. So for a long time, there have only really been two environments that uh, allowed uh, professional, um, credible uh, cross-platform cross UI uh, development. And that's obviously uh, Qt, which is uh, what we do most of our time here at KDAP, uh, and then HTML5, which is sort of the other side of the fence. Um, these have been the two main competitors, not entirely competitors, of course, because they, they have different strengths. And now we're seeing that there are more contenders. Google is putting a lot of weight behind Flutter. Um, Microsoft recently announced their Maui initiative for a cross-platform .NET-based environment. Um, there seem to be some UI frameworks for Rust up and coming. So this, this, it seems like the, um, the, the playing field for cross-platform UI development gets shaken up. Um, we like this because competition is, is good. It makes everybody work harder and better. So this should, this should drive our field for the better in general. And it, it's going to be very exciting to see what comes out of this. So these are some of the trends we over here at KDAP are seeing and that we expect to continue uh, into 2021 and obviously beyond that. By the way, we are hiring. So if you're looking for an awesome uh, job working with very interesting stuff, uh, talk to us. Um, okay, so now I made, I've made, hopefully made the HR director happy. Thanks for having me, Robert. Yes, and thank you. The Library of the Month for December is Qt Keychain. And in many applications, we want to store sensitive information, such as user passwords, in a secure way. 
Most, if not all, platforms provide a solution to store secret data safely, examples being Windows Credential Manager, Mac OS Keychain, or Android's Keystore system. Qt Keychain is a small library providing a platform-independent API to use these native solutions from a Qt application. It's freely available on GitHub under a BSD-style no-strings-attached license and used by various open source and commercial projects. We at KDAB have used it successfully in customer projects as well as our internal tools. In announcements, we've got C++20 has now been published. Follow the link below the video for more info. Well, all the info, really. To help end this year on a high, we've compiled... <sighs> right, we've compiled some bloopers from this year. Of course, none of the outtakes are mine, because I always get it right in one take. And with that, thank you. This was the last edition of this year. And with that, thank you. And with that, thank you. And with that, thank you. How many takes do I need for the thank you? And with that, thank you. Can I just get this outro, please? It's just two sentences. And with that, thank you. This was the last edition of this year. Stay safe and have a nice holiday season. Enjoy and see you next year. I'll do. No more.